Hi, and welcome to This Week in Science and Technology, where today we continue our exploration into the world of physics. Last week, in episode two, we outlined three specific requirements that must be met by anyone challenging Einstein's work. There I said that a successful challenge must meet three requirements. The challenge must show that relativity is mathematically flawed, relativity is an approximation of another theory, and at least one case where relativity fails to work properly. I met the first requirement by showing that the spherical wave proof found in Einstein's 1905 paper fails. A spherical wave requires a constant radius that starts at the shape's center. These conditions, a constant radius and starting at the shape's center, were not met in Einstein's transform shape and is why the proof fails. But this raises an interesting question. If Einstein's theory is wrong, why does it work and why do scientists believe that it is the only theory that can accurately predict certain experiments? In fact, in an online video, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a well-known and respected scientist said, and I quote, relativity will never be discredited because it works, unquote. So in a way, his answer defines my objective. I must explain why relativity works, which I'll do today, and I must show where it fails, which I'll begin to discuss today and we'll cover in more detail next time. Dr. Tyson's answer is based on the idea that there are only two possibilities, classical mechanics, which doesn't work for a large class of experiments, and relativity. But his answer ignores the possibility of a third option another option that I call modern mechanics. We'll go into how modern mechanics works in later episodes. Today, we're just going to look at one of its equations to see how it compares to relativity. To begin, let's look at one of Einstein's equations. It calculates a new value. In practice, the original value is subtracted from this new value to find a difference. Einstein's equation might look pretty on a page of paper, but at the turn of the 20th century, this was actually quite hard to solve. And he didn't have the advantage of calculators and computers that make solving this equation easy today. Instead, Einstein had to rely on another mathematical technique called a Taylor series. A Taylor series allows mathematicians to take hard problems and turn them into easier ones. And this is exactly what Einstein did. He converted his difference equation into a Taylor series, and then he truncated or cut off the series after the first expression because he didn't need all of the digits of accuracy. It's the same thing as saying pi is 3.14. In reality, pi is not 3.14. There are many digits that follow, but often 3.14 is all that we need and it's safe to truncate it there. Not only is Einstein's new equation easier to solve and use in experiments, with just a few more math steps, Einstein uses this cutoff equation to create the famous E equals mc squared. Now you might ask why I just walked you through something that appears to work. That's because Dr. Tyson, like many people, believe that Einstein's theory is the only one that can arrive at E equals mc squared and the only one that can predict certain experiments. To show you that's not true, I first needed to show you how Einstein did his math, especially the part involving the Taylor series and truncation. So let's look at modern mechanics, which uses a different equation and is based on a different set of assumptions. In fact, in many ways, modern mechanics shares more similarities with its classical mechanics cousin than it does with relativity. We begin with the modern mechanics difference equation. And while this equation is easier to solve than Einstein's, we will express it as a Taylor series where you'll notice something very interesting. It has the exact same first expression as Einstein's Taylor series. This should tell you two things. First, if we truncate the modern mechanics series like Einstein did with his, and then we follow the same steps as Einstein continues with mathematically, it will also produce E equals mc squared. This is important because it means that 
relativity is no longer unique. Now, while the two difference equations are not identical, they are close. If we graph their difference, notice that it is nearly zero until velocity approaches the speed of light. This means that both theories make similar predictions. In fact, if we look at one specific experiment, the Ives-Stillwell experiment, we see that relativity predicts 21.42 as the answer, and the experimental result was 21.37. The difference of 0 0.05 is actually pretty good. That is until you see that the modern mechanics prediction was 21.37 exactly, just like the experimental result. Because modern mechanics is an exact match with the experiment, we can say that relativity is the approximation, which satisfies our second requirement. So today we've done several things and shattered a few myths. Relativity is not uniquely alone. Another theory makes nearly identical predictions. And this third option, called modern mechanics, will also lead us to dismiss the idea that relativity has been proven. In fact, when you have two theories that make nearly identical predictions, we can't say that an experiment proves one, exper one theory over the other. This brings us back to our original question. If Einstein is wrong, why does his theory appear to work and why do scientists believe that it is the only one that accurately predicts certain experiments? And the answer is, Einstein's theory is not the only one that predicts certain experiments. We now know that modern mechanics will also do that. And we have explained why it appears to work because it is an approximation of modern mechanics. This is no different than how 22 divided by 7 is an approximation for pi, at least up to two decimal points. So in this episode and the last, we've shown an incurable math mistake in Einstein's theory and that modern mechanics can make the same predictions as relativity with slightly better accuracy. This leads us to a new question. How do we know for sure that relativity is the approximation and not the other way around? There are two ways to answer this question. One way is to review every experiment and repeatedly show that modern mechanics outperforms relativity. As you can imagine, that approach is extremely time consuming. The other is to invalidate relativity by showing that it fails to properly predict the results of a well-recognized experiment. And that's where we'll begin next time. I hope you'll join me next week where we'll complete our look at how I satisfy the three requirements that prove relativity wrong. Until then, I'm Stephen B. Bryant, and that's This Week in Science and Technology.